Next up, we're gonna look at something as simple as a button, and you will soon realize there's a lot of lessons to be learned here. So what is a button? A button is essentially a switch, right? They come in all different sizes, shapes, from the arcade button to the Google Android Development Board, which is also Arduino-based. This one actually is a button and a joystick to a very simple little button like this one, which is breadboard friendly. So why is the button so complicated? Well, there's a lot of interesting things that happen when you press a button. So let's take a look at them. We'll start by loading up the Arduino software and looking at the example digital button. Now, if we read some of the comments on the top, there's an LED attached to pin 13 and a button attached to pin two. And that also goes to five volts. So what are the tricky things about the button? Well, we'll start with this. When you press a button, it makes an electrical connection. It actually closes a circuit. The problem is with an Arduino, if we just connect a button to a pin, you would think it's fairly simple. Send voltage out of that pin. When you press the button, it closes the loop and it can read that. Well, that is true, but you're gonna run into some problems. Number one, you really should never have a pin on an Arduino floating. And what does that mean? You shouldn't have a wire going into it and just hanging out and doing nothing. So essentially, if we had the wire going into the button and the button isn't pressed and the button's open, that wire is just floating. There's nothing that it's attached to in it. And what happens is any electrical interference, even putting your hand close to it, radio waves, anything, flipping a light switch, could cause some interference and the Arduino can very accurately measure some of those interferences and you don't know whether it's actually a button press or if it's some kind of interference. So what we do is when we wire up the button, and I'm gonna do it right here on this breadboard, I'm gonna leverage this gutter in the middle, is we take pin two, just as described in the code, we wire it to one side of the button. Now in this button, it should be noted that here to here is always connected, but here to here is not. So when I press this button, essentially this pin and this pin will be connected. So I have right now pin two going to one of the leads of the button. And then I can have the other side of that button go into five volt. So right now what's happening is this wire is connected to pin two and since I'm not pressing the button, nothing is registering. So this pin two is floating right now and that will cause some trouble. I'm gonna move this one over a little bit just so it's easier to see. So what do we do? Well, it's actually a problem that's easily solved and it uses a resistor, a 10K resistor. I'm gonna add this one to the board. And what I do is since I know this is always connected, I can run this resistor to another row of the breadboard and then I could attach the resistor to a ground pin, which I'll use this one right here above 13. So why does that make a difference? Well now, since this pin is going to be always trying to read whether a button's pressed, the electricity can go through here, travel through the button, and when it's not pressed, it'll go through this 10K resistor into this wire back into the ground. It forms a loop, so that pin has something to do. Think of it that way, is, is keeping those pins occupied. This pin is occupied now. When I press the button, I'm actually connecting these two corners, right here and right here. Now the electricity has a choice. It can either go through the 10K resistor or without any resistance can go and check out five volts. Electricity always wants to do the path of least resistance, so that's what it does. So that essentially takes the five volts through the button and to pin two. Make sense? I hope so. Let's try it with some code. I will go ahead and plug my Arduino in. Remember the first thing you need to do, 
Make sure your board's right, mine is. And then your port, mine's selected properly. And I can upload this code. You can watch the little lights blink. There they go. And now it's running. But what's happening? Well, if I press this button, you'll see the pin right here will light up. That's hard to see on camera. But remember before when we talked about an LED, we learned how to wire up an LED properly. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll go over the code in more detail in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is take my LED, I'm gonna put the positive on the top row here and the negative three rows below. And I can take this and jump it over using a resistor. That's a 560 ohm resistor. Take that and put it over to pin 13. And then all I have to do is take the negative side of that LED and plug it into ground. Now when I press it, that LED should come on and sure enough it does. So hopefully that makes sense. Now I've applied what we learned in the LED into the button sketch and you all at home can see the LED light up much easier. So how is this working again? Pin two, it's going through the button. Now remember, it's a little confusing here. Both sides of this button, these two little dots here are connected. So right now the voltage is going from pin two through the resistor and back to ground. When I press the button, it allows five volts to connect to pin two. When that connects, again, the LED is hooked up to the negative side ground and the positive through a resistor because we don't want all five volts going to the pin back to pin 13. Now you would think that's all there is to learning about a button, but I told you it was a little complicated. So let's take a look at the code. Again, we have all the comments here, very handy. And here we have some constant integers declared. So the first one is constant integer button pin two. So the name of this constant integer or an integer that will never change is button pin. And we say it is explicitly two. The next constant integer, this case we named it LED pin, is explicitly 13. We have another integer that is not a constant, so that means it can change, and it's called button state and is explicitly equal to zero right now. In our setup, remember this gets run once, we do a couple of things. Number one, pin mode, the LED pin, which if we look up here is 13, is set to an output. That's the same as when we learned about LEDs in the previous video. And the pin mode button pin is now input. So we're, we're, we're ingesting the signal as opposed to putting it out there. Now in the loop, you're gonna see it gets a little more complicated than just a typical high low. And there's reasons for this and we're gonna build on this code in a bit. So the first thing it looks at is button state. Button state initially was zero, but now button state will equal the digital reading of the button pin. Now remember when we read digital, it's high or low, on or off. So right now we said it's zero, off, and we're just gonna decide, is it on, is it off? Which one is it? And we're gonna tell it that button state holds that variable. Next up, we're gonna check if the push button has been pressed. And if it has, we're gonna say the push, the, the button state is now high. So if the button state, now here's a nice lesson to learn. This one tricks many coders, even myself at this point, I've done it plenty of times. I just don't like to admit it. But the double equal sign is very different than a single equal sign. If we looked up earlier, we can see LED pin equals 13. LED pin is 13. So if I had one equal sign down here, I would say button state is high. We don't wanna say that. What we want is two equal signs. And that says if button state is equal to high. Very different, not is, is equal to, 
okay? So we're not declaring it as being high or low. We're saying, is it high or low? Very, very important distinction. And if button state is high, then we will digitally write the LED pin 13 to high or on. Now with an if, you can have, there's different ways of looking at if statements, but on the, in this case, we're using else. And if it's high, we're gonna turn the pin on. Otherwise, which when we have just one else is basically saying otherwise, otherwise digitally write the LED pin low or turn it off. Sounds simple? It actually is fairly simple. There's a problem though. There's something called debouncing and we're gonna look at that in the next video.